Dawn the Stitching Coach back again with square two of the Memory Blanket pattern by Tiki Knits. You can find a link to the pattern in the description below. If you haven't watched the first video for square one, stop now and watch that video first. Also, remember to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications when new videos are added. Let's get knitting! Just like in the other part of the video, you'll need your knitting needles, a stitch counter or your favorite knitting app, a darning needle, two markers, at least one needs to have the safety pin type of opening, and your big pile of yarn. So in the pattern on Tiki Knits, we're going to be doing number two, which is this green one. First thing we need to do is decide what yarn we're going to put next to this. And I'm thinking I don't want to do a variegated, so I'm going to do one of these solids. This one maybe, this, this doesn't have a lot. So I'm thinking this one is out. And maybe down to these two, because this one doesn't seem to have a lot. So I'm going to go with this darker brown. But again, if you have scraps, you can pick up any color that either coordinates or matches. So in the pattern for square two, it talks about casting on 20 stitches with your new yarn. You're going to place your marker and then you're going to turn your old square so that it's like a diamond and with the cast on at the bottom. So here we have our diamond cast on at the bottom. After we cast on 20 stitches, we're then going to pick up and get 20 stitches from this square. Make sure this is the right side and remember in the last video we marked the wrong side row so we knew which one was the wrong side. So we have our 20 stitches cast on, our markers in place, and now we're ready to pick up our stitches on our first square. But before we do that, let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. So you got to know what your right side row is because there is a right side and a wrong side to your work. When you join yarns, you get this dash on the back. So if you join it on the wrong side, then you'll get the dash on the front of your work. And you want to make sure that you avoid that. You don't want to see any dashes on the front of your work where you join it. Those should be on the back side of your work, not on the front side. The next step in the pattern, after we've cast on 20, placed our marker, is to pick up and knit 20 stitches along the side. So again, the pattern says holding it as a diamond, cast on on the bottom, we're going to be picking up on this right side of the diamond. This is going to become this part here that's connected to square one. And this brown is going to become this right side of the square. To pick up a knit, you're going to make sure that you're picking up the purl bumps that are along the side, not these ladders, these straight pieces in the middle. So you're looking for the ones that look like little purl bumps. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my first purl bump here. So I've picked up my stitch. So now I'm going to knit it just as if I'm knitting a regular stitch. So let's pull these stitches up towards the front. Make sure that nothing is twisted because that will affect your cast on and how it looks. And then we're going to knit into that first picked up stitch. Again, we're going to skip these straight stitches and go for the ones that look like a purl bump. So I'm going to pick up this one here. And again, knit that stitch and keep it really close to the next one so that you don't have a big hole or yarn over. Again, I'm going to skip this straight stitch here and go for the purl bump right here. If one is tighter than the other, just make sure you're grabbing the purl bump and not the straight stitch or that bar that's in between the purl bumps. So again, I'm skipping this one in the middle and I'm going for the purl bump here, this orange one. Knit as normal. And 
and now we're back here where the yarn tail is so this is our last stitch so now just make sure you have 40 stitches cast on and they're all straight and lined up once you ensure that you have 40 stitches we're now going to continue as square one we're going to be knitting both sides for a garter stitch design and our bias should be going as a left leaning slant I'm going to knit a couple rows so pause now if you want to do this catch up and in a couple rows we'll add our marker to mark our wrong side so that we can take this one off and we'll keep reusing both of these as we add new squares see you back here in a minute Just as in square one, on the right side, we're going to stop when we get to two stitches before the stitch marker so that we can knit these two together. So again, we're going through not just one, but two stitches and knitting those together, slipping the marker, and then slip, slip, knit. So we're gonna slip that as for knitting, slip that as for knitting, then insert the left hand needle into the front of those stitches because we're going to knit in the back. And again, that creates the left leaning and right leaning slant and the bias that's gonna bring it in. So now we're going to go ahead and knit to the end of this row. We're knitting on the back and decreasing on the front, okay? See you back here when we have a couple more rows and we add our stitch marker. And now you can see I've got a few rows in and on the back you can see that obvious little dash that pops up on the back. So we don't want that on the front. So just remember when you do your other squares always make sure we're starting on the right side row or the right side of the fabric. I'm going to insert a marker so I can tell that this is my wrong side and we'll reuse these in other squares. In the next video we'll be working on square number three. We're going to be casting on the bottom and picking up this other side of the square. So number three will go here. All right so I hope you like this video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications and I'll see you next time. Bye.